So I went to Nashville. I just got back last night. While I was gone, my Gibson ES-175 sold. And then also, I got a call that my friend Tim has a guitar ready for me. So let's go sell some guitars, pack some guitars up, go to Baton Rouge, pick up a cool guitar. Let's go. Also, I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. I help people find and sell cool old guitars. So if you dig this video, please like and subscribe. Yeah, hit the, hit the bell button, and that way you get to know when I put new videos up and the cool guitars that I find. So, let's go. So there are good guitars and there are great guitars. Good guitars are predictably found everywhere. You can find them at Guitar Center, you can find them all over. Fenders, especially the Mexican and the Americans, predictably good. Gibson, not so much. But then there are great guitars. There are guitars that you pick up and you immediately discover something new about yourself. So those are the guitars that I go after. No. Gibson again, dude. Oh, there we go. I made it a, oh, just a little good. bit more meaty, like an old vintage one, so okay. you have more wood there in case you want to bounce it again off there the floor. <laughs> I know you didn't do that. And that's at the same strings when you brought it in. So I didn't know. Now they're kind of, there's some, if you rub your finger yeah, down, yeah. you can feel a lot of dents and weirdness in the strings. Yeah. But I think it'll play the notes okay. Uh -huh. You may have to change them. But yeah, yeah, I'll probably change them. That's great. Cool. Good. Look, I tried to get all that old glue somebody had had on there. You can still kind of feel it, but you don't. Yeah. You know, it's just, if it wasn't real lacquer, I could get it off. Yeah. But I'm going to sand right through the color if oh, I yeah. keep messing with it. So I've got it as smooth and as slick as possible, but... Um, so this is a 2013 Gibson Hummingbird Pro. Uh, it was purchased from my friend John Prendergast, uh, actually from his widow. So John and I never became friends this side of death. Um, he passed away, uh, and then a couple months later, a mutual friend of mine and his wife uh, put us in touch. He had a lot of guitars that he'd built. He had a lot of guitars that he had wanted to work on. This was one of them. He bought it from somebody. So when he bought it, uh, the headstock had completely broken off. And that's when I found it. It had been sitting around for probably a year or two when he got it. The headstock was completely broken. I tried to fix it. I'm relatively handy. Uh, and it was a clean enough break that it just seemed to fit together. I glued it. I let it sit for two days. Uh, and when I put the strings on it within about an hour or so, it had started pulling apart again. So I freaked out. I didn't know what to do. I had a friend that had recommended, their, he said, hey, there's this guy on Craigslist in New Orleans uh, who always advertises that he fix broken headstocks. I've heard he's good. And so I ended up, long story short, I used him. He did an awful, awful job. I, I didn't pay him, but what he had done is he'd stripped all the finish off, basically off of most of the back of the neck. And he'd use some awful, really foamy kind of glue. So he gave it back to me with the headstock still not attached. And it was a very, very bad repair. At that point, I just had the onslaught of despair hit me of, oh man, this is a great guitar that is going to die because it's just, I thought it was, I was afraid it was too far gone. So that's when my friend Tim comes in. I, I brought it by Tim Crawford's shop at Tim's Guitars in Baton Rouge. And he ended up helping me figure out that uh, he could fix it. And the way that he was going to do it was he said, well, well, we'll cut the neck at an angle and we'll splice a new piece of mahogany onto the end of the headstock. We can use a new headstock overlay uh, and we can match the finish. And it's unbelievably good. Um, given, okay, so it's a little different than the original carve on the neck, but that's just because Tim made it instead of Gibson. Uh, 
uh, but Tim is wonderfully talented. The guitar is great. The finish matches. Uh, if anything, you'd look at it and you say, hey, there's a little something funky, but it's not noticeable. I don't think most people would know that the headstock was broken. So if you ask yourself, is it a good idea to buy broken guitars? I mean, it obviously all depends. It depends on the guitar, how broken it is, who tried to fix it, how long has it been broken. Um, this one feels like a belly flop into a swan dive. Uh, when I got it, it was broken, but it should not have been as dramatic of a repair as I made it. Uh, and I made one pivotal mistake, which is I took someone at their word, and I didn't ask for pictures of, it, of repairs they'd done. That was my own silly mistake. Um, so what should have been about a $150 repair ended up being about a $500 repair. Uh, but in the end, it came out a much better and stronger guitar. So, so here it is, 2013. Uh, Hummingbird. I've jokingly referred to this as the Phoenix because uh, out of the ashes this guitar has come back to life and it's just a great sounding guitar. this video please like subscribe hit the bell and uh and you'll find some cool stuff with me all right let's go